two days in bed, had a horrendous um, stomach bug and first my son got it on Sunday and then like next day, what was it? So I was absolutely fine on Monday and then on the like early morning of Tuesday basically, I woke up like violently sick. <laughs> yeah, so but the the I think the worst part is behind me. I'm just left now with that general fatigue and tiredness after having a very, very strong nasty stomach bag. I'm not going to go into the details of it, so don't worry, I'll spare you that. The point of today's video is today is actually Thursday. I'll be very transparent with you. I haven't painted in a little while and I'm starting to miss it. Things got quite busy previous weeks. My shop sales have really taken up in the month of July. It's been amazing and I have been really busy with the sorting out the orders. So thank you so much for everyone who placed their orders. And then the um, the stomach bug kicked in out of nowhere. This week I had planned to edit my online course so I can release it, but I will. I was, um, or rather I wasn't able to do anything towards it, just was really, really not feeling great. So today I am sick of being sick and today's the third day for me. Um, my son has gone back to school now, so he's like two days ahead. But for me personally, I am uh, still all over the place. So if the video is a little bit all over the place, then you know why. I just want to create some art that will make me feel good. And I thought of what I would like to do. And I flipped through my sketchbook and usually drawing flowers, mixing colors, that sort of a thing I love doing. But today I felt like faces is something I haven't done in a long while. And I found this little illustration and I thought she was so, so cute. I'm going to use my moving doll set stamping set um it's still available on alona creates but there aren't that many left this is i believe my third i think it's my third restock so i will take a little break uh, before doing the next restock yes yeah, so like i was saying if you want um to get hold of the moving doll set before it sells out then now is a good time so I am going to, I think, just focus on the faces today because I feel so fatigued and yet I do feel like I want to have fun with art, just not maybe, you know, go to the full extent of it. So what I have here is an acrylic block. These are also available on my website. So have a look if you're interested. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to just create a few illustrations. Today was the first day when I done some like chores around the house. A little bit, you know, like just really little bit. And God, I was like out of breath and sweating and all that shebang, so yeah, um, nasty, nasty little bug. Okay, so face features. So there's also another stamp set that I have, let me show you. So I also have the face of the day. This was the one of the original stamp sets that I had out for years and years and I have been restocking it purely because it's been doing so well. It's one of my classic stamp sets and you can then create your own looks with it and you can play around and kind of, you know, embellish it in different ways, change the makeup colors and just, you know, change the skin colors to suit your own complexion is the word. It took me about three minutes to think of the word. So anyway, you have a lot more options for different lips, eyes, eyebrows, and even some little details like a heart to individual lashes and set of lashes. A full lashes so if you have that set already you can play with that if you're one of my 
long time followers. If not, then you can uh, look into it if you wanted to have it. And I have even less left in my stock for the FOTD, just to let you know. Okay, so generally, oh, I made a little mistake here. So I never start with eyes, so scrap that. Lips. Lips is always what I start with. So in the lips, we have the kind of nostrils and we have a little beauty mark there. And basically, I set my lips very low in the face because I love that look. And then I base my eyes according to that. Now, those faces that I have slightly tilted, of course, I'll go with that. So see how I'm doing this? Very easily, I'm rotating my wrist like that. And holding it on a rounder surface rather than a straight one makes a big, big difference. And then now onto the eyes. Okay, I'm gonna do the right eye first. So here we have a little bit of a cat eye going. And yeah, I'm gonna do cat eye here as well. And actually, I'm gonna play around just to show you how you can change the face by changing the angle of the eye. I'm gonna do even more cat eye, this one here. This ended up more kind of like a straight line, really. And now onto the second eye, so we're gonna match that. I mean, you can create some cookie little faces if you wanted to and mismatch the angles. That's also a possibility. But in this case, I'm going to match them so this is a nice lifted, really lifted cat eye. And this is more straight than slightly lifted, but not too much. So basically focus on where the ear is and then match it to the other ear. That's like really easy to do. You can see here it's even more lifted than here, but generally that's how you would go about it. So that's all that I'm going to use from this set today. And the rest will be illustrated on top of it. There is the bun from the FOTD that you could use straight from the stamp set and help yourself. I've got loads and loads of illustrations. Uh, let me try and find some of my older sketchbooks to demonstrate those. Okay, I've got here some of my all-time favorite illustrations. And this one has the two kind of buns. Most of them are tutorials because I was teaching how you can use the stamp set, the FOTD, um, and the proportions of the face and the hair and all sorts of things you can do. And you can find all of that in the playlist, um, which, something like what was it <laughs> well put it in the info here somewhere down below or maybe I can even link the playlist for you I'll figure out later can't really think straight right now but I'll give you a little flip through of the kind of styles you can create these are from my older um, floral stamp set I don't have it available anymore I have updated it slightly now and I've got the other one, which is the Botanicals stamp set. So it's this one right here. And then we've got all of these beauties. Lavender, I only have two left from the botanical wildflower collection so you can use it like that as well and create like fairy type of pictures and paintings illustrations god <laughs> i really can't talk today can i so loads and loads of different things you can do but here is also some examples of the moving dolls you can dress them up you can make them you know sassy 
or you can just use the face and then illustrate the rest which is what I'm going to do today. I think I'm just going to illustrate the neckline and probably leave it at that. You can play also with like lengthening the limbs. And then I have a few pages left here, just three pages. And when I feel better, I want to film finishing, like the finishing process of a sketchbook. Okay, enough chatting now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my perfect pen to do the line work now. So I'm going to use my carbon ink pen, the platinum, with the waterproof ink. I actually filmed a Wednesday video, but even the Monday video, because I was looking after Mason on Monday, like the entire day he was not feeling great um obviously you know that's my priority so i haven't had time to oh my god i'm actually struggling to follow the line today that's how bad it is okay it is what it is we're gonna work with that yes yeah, so on monday the video came out very very late um i stayed up super super late to try and finish it because yeah I just you know I kind of want my viewers to feel that con consistency that they always have something to to watch and enjoy and it's a functional channel so I kind of you know stayed up super late not knowing that that same night I will wake up with um very unpleasant symptoms of a stomach bug. So anyway, yeah, I uh, filmed a catch-up video for Wednesday. Just had absolutely no no possibility of editing it. Like, I just, uh, yeah, I was not feeling great. So that's to let you know why the Monday video was so late. So let's see, I'm going to give her a neck and just leave it on that today and then hair wise quite like these kind of Mickey Mouse inspired buns there is something about illustrating girls it just is oh this one is even sadder now my goodness um, we'll try to make this one nice and sussy something about face illustrations where I can just be playful even when I feel not so great it's like a little comforting joyful experience which is different to when I illustrate flowers I feel that with faces I can be even more creative and like create fun little characters and moods and facial expressions and I can take it as funny or as kooky or as pretty as I want and with flowers you obviously can't give like a human expression to a flower so let's see what hair do we want here because she's looking a little bit on the funny side, I'm going to give her a big Mickey Mouse buns, like that. And then I'm going to cover her rather large forehead with big bangs. Eyebrows. Eyebrows this time. Going to follow the line of the eye so they're going to go downwards now here we're going to let's start with the eyes this time when you're stamping and then lining over it make sure the stamping ink is completely dry otherwise it will fray the line of your so today my lines are super wonky oh goodness me okay so then let's see gonna give her a neck that's going this way 
and then can't give her a broken neck so this one <laughs> has to be about that way so this one's going to have like upright buns and actually I'm going to give her double buns why not haven't tried it before but let's see and then we're also going to give her a middle parting banks as well the other thing I like doing is always give them oh, eyebrows so with the sassy ones I like to give like an angled eyebrow to lift the face so I'm going to take a Derwent line maker in 08 nice and thick and these are great to really quickly fill in the chalkers right there And they're very smooth, they don't scratch the paper. So if I wanted to fill a large area quickly, the fountain pen nib is obviously extra fine, so it would scratch on the paper. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do is do the line work first on the hair and then get to the watercolour portion and this is why it's important to have waterproof ink because you don't want it to be mess although I do have a series of illustrations where I actually enjoyed having a water um, soluble ink and I was using it to the advantage of the illustration. It's just like a style, a phase I went through. I'm not entirely sure if it's me feeling hot from what I'm going through right now or whether it's actually hot because it's it has rained already and it's been quite humid in the morning and uh, the sun has come out. So either it's me or it actually is hot. One thing I don't like in this illustration is how they kind of look like they're floating. So I think I'm just going to give them slightly more upright shoulders and I will probably create an element of a dress or something, which is really easy to do with watercolor. So I'm going to do exactly the same technique now as you've seen here on the other two hairs and then we will uh, meet again. In terms of colors, I could go through different palettes that I have, but too tired. So I will grab what's the uh, nearest to me, which is the botanical palette. I have a number of videos where I was putting it together. If you're curious, if you haven't seen it, that is. And I'm looking for my favorite brush at the moment, which is the Princeton Neptune Round 4. And then I have a bit of water here. Can anyone explain to me? So the Kilner jars, right? So this one I'm just keeping for obviously my dirty watercolor water. And it's so like nasty and like, you know, rusty inside the lids. But the same thing happened when I did the pickles with the other jars, like the tall jars they have. Uh, they're really thick. They look like a um, milkshake type of a glass, really thick glass, and then they have the same lids. After using them once, they already have gone like rusted. I just don't understand. The whole point of doing pickles in a pickle jar is surely to have a decent lid. I just don't get it to you. Those of you who do pickles, do let me know. Maybe I'm missing the point. Okay, right, so let's see. So what colors would I use to mix various skin tones so first of all i'm gonna go clockwise i think i'll start with the lightest and i'll give her a lovely light pinky kind of blushy type of skin tone at this point actually it'd be great to have a bit of white as well so i could make a little bit more or, or give the tone a bit more opacity and but basically 
instead I will just use the water. So first layer, I'm not going to cover it all, just going to add a little bit of it here and there and it needs to wait. Then we're going to go into this maybe more kind of Mediterranean skin tone, I'm thinking. So we've got some Conacredon Gold. Let's say I'll add it somewhere here. And Transparent Red Oxide. And a bit of the Yellow Ochre. A bit, this is a bit yellow. Again, this is kind of fun illustrative work rather than uh, a, you know realistic portraiture. So, of course, I'm playing with the colors and I'm playing and having fun with it. So it's not to say that this is a realistic skin tone, but we're just playing with differences. Okay, and then for the next one, I'm going to go slightly darker and I'm going to go into the transparent red oxide. And to that, I'm going to add naphthamide maroon. And I'm just going to play with the variations to get it where I want it to be. So notice where I put the colors when they are darker or like medium tone complexions. This is how I usually work. So with the lighter ones, I kind of go everywhere with them. Like a more even coating. And I have a nice puddle there still so I can intensify. So with the darker skin tone I want it to go a level darker so I'm going to go in without waiting for the drying effect because I will build it up slightly more than the other skin tones because of its tone value. So it will be darker than light and medium. So about there. I like to do the makeup first, then the dresses. So first of all, let's do the hair then, shall we? The hair can also dry together. So let's give this girl a bit of a blonde hair. And I've used this ochre in my previous illustrations for blonde hair. This is the yellow ochre by Schminke. There you go, that's that. And then she's going to be a red hair girl. So I'm going to mix up some lovely orange with a tiny bit of naphthamide maroon in there. to deepen the orange and actually also make it more intense. So I'm starting at the top of the bun, at the bottom of the bun, 
And before things dry, I'm going to go with a wet brush and just blend it all a little bit, maintaining some of the highlights. That's actually a really pretty hair color. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same with the other side. This one is slightly more darker. Okay, and then for the final girl, we're going to go with dark hair, and I'm thinking of, maybe I'll go with the naphtamine maroon. I was going to say, like, maybe dark brown hair, but I quite like this naphtamide maroon, and also because we already used it in the skin. It's a good idea when you're doing watercolour illustrations to use the same color in mixes and then maybe somewhere else in the illustration it just works nicely so I'm just using it as it is not mixing it with any other colors in this instance And now with a slightly damp brush, I'm just going to connect these lines. So usually I'll do then a second layer of the skin tone. Now, because I don't want it to be much darker, I'm going to mix in some of the yellow ochre into the pink. and just add it in like the shadow areas and the contour of the face as well and let the water do its thing ideally I don't want too hard edges at this point but we do want to give her like a nose shape. Okay, so that's good now. We're going to do the same over here. Actually in the same puddle, I'm going to add a bit more of the schminke. I think that's some, is that a jet fighter or something? that is a very loud something so again both ears contour of the face and then just softening Okay, and then here, this little puddle, I'm going to mix up, oh this is too close to the hair color, so I will bring some more red in there, which is the transparent pyrrol orange. Really beautiful skin tone, very rich.
and it has a lovely amount of red in there. I'm just going to create a more saturated puddle of yellow ochre and also intensify the hair on this one. I find that it's the palest uh, compared to like contrast to the other hair, like the other hair are popping so they don't need that but this hair is a little bit too watery, too transparent so I'm just going to add a bit more so this is good now just blend it okie dokie okay so I just realized I forgot her nose so I have a wet brush and I'm just going to go back into that color and edit I'm also going to give her slightly wider nostrils purely because if we're going with a darker skin tone the ethnicity usually suggests a slightly wider nose so that's what I'm going to do here also and a little bit of color right underneath because if we're leaving two large white areas on a dark skin tone illustration it will look slightly bizarre so there can be lighter areas but just not the white of the paper completely like you know just over her mouth here looked like a white moustache so think about that as well okay final we're going to mix up some color that I would consider to go under under the eye and maybe in the eyeshadow area so this one is getting like a peach so what I've done there is I mixed up the yellow ochre with quinacridone red light this is where the creativity comes in you can just play with it you don't have to follow any rules so I'm just smudging it and making it softer and I'm gonna do that adjusting the color slightly as I'm going around here so for this one I'll go with something more typical like transparent red oxide into the same puddle actually right underneath and above the eye and then before it dries very quickly with a clean brush not too much water just touch over it see if it's too much water it just becomes a bit of a mess the water control is actually important for this type of work and I will leave it at that and now we're going to do the darker skin tone. So here I would want to really amplify the intensity. So I'm going to add a little bit of the naphthamide maroon into that. A bit more. But I don't want to have the hair colour there. So what I'm going to do is just do naphthamide maroon with transparent pyroloxide that's going to give us a lovely red toned but a dark red toned so you can see it doesn't look like anything like her hair and we're going to follow the same as before hardly any water I tend to just squeeze out my brush with fingers, which you probably can't see, but I tend to go like this and then just like that. Now again, time to wait. So here I can see it's a bit of a mess. So I'll have to go back to that to fix it and I'll show you what I'll do to do that, but it needs to be dry. Okay, so how would I fix this situation where I had too much water 
um, going down from the barrel of the brush which can happen sometimes so as you look at the bristles they're not too bad but then there's a little drop sitting on the barrel and basically it just drops in so that can happen and you can also fix that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the same or similar type of a mix I don't quite remember what it was now but I'll go with transparent red oxide and the yellow ochre so I'm going to repeat exactly what I did before you'll see that be a lot more contrast and less kind of crazy <laughs> well not crazy but you know what I mean like more controlled and less spread so here we go it's also great contrast there so I'll leave it at that and I will start now with the next part of the of the makeup so usually I keep it quite simple if it's going to be purely watercolor like it is today I am going to give her all of them I actually quite like grey eyes so Payne's grey it is just a teensy little bit like that so I'll go and do that for all of the eyes so I can actually get that done in one go so just pulling out the color throughout the eye i find that gray eyes um, on a darker skin tone illustrations look really amazing kind of makes them pop even more again not maybe very realistic but um we're just having fun so let's go into quinacridone red light for this illustration for the lips so like this beautiful peach well, it's not a peach it's like a bubblegum pink and then we're going to go for this beautiful perlene scarlet right next to it gorgeous red one of my favorites when it comes to beautiful reds makes a stunning lip color and what shall we do with her lips? Deep Scarlet, now that would be a great one actually. So it's slightly more muted red. It'd be beautiful with her skin tone. So it's still red, but works better. Next thing is the eyeliner and eyelashes and then the dress and we're done. I'm going to move to a fine liner again. I'm going to use the 0.5. In this case, it's a uni pin, but just to avoid any confusion, I've got a number of fine liners, the Micron, Pigma, and you know, just all of them are fantastic um, fine liners. I just have different sizes here. And so I find them very easy to like I said for larger areas they're smooth as butter and very easy to work so I'm just filling this entire area which is just pre uh, pre drawn for you you don't need to do anything about the eyeliner you could of course use a different color be your makeup artist you could do like a little makeup diary for instance if you ever created a beauty look that you really liked you could find similar colors to an eyeshadow and then just write down what eyeshadow what eyeliner you used what lip color what foundation and just kind of have like a little memo to refer to if you wanted to repeat that look because you know myself i have loads and loads of draws of um, different eyeshadow palettes and all that so 
sometimes you can't really remember what exactly you used. Okay, so now on to the lashes. These are my signature lashes. With the dress, I'm just going to go the same for all, to be honest. I'm going to go into this lovely... Maybe I'll be a bit more adventurous today. I've got a nice dollop of ultramarine turquoise here. And I'm just going to kind of create little elements of a dress. That just brings a bit of color to the illustration. We've got loads of beautiful red tones here. And kind of fills the page nicely as well. A bit more color is always a good idea. And that is it. Those are our three girls. So thank you so much for being with me on a day when I wasn't feeling too great. I pulled myself together to be there for you. And that is it for today. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.